Tomb Raider Definitive Edition is the long-awaited sequel to the original Tomb Raider games, originally released on the Game Boy Color in 1990-something. Now in the original Tomb Raiders, you were just playing around with Tomb Raider and you were jumping up on the platforms and climbing up on stuff because your tits were too big so you had to chase them otherwise they'd float away from you. In this new Tomb Raider though, they didn't even make it a sequel to those other ones. They lost a book where they were writing the whole Tomb Raider story, it was full of stuff about the butler went in the refrigerator and Tomb Raider died a few times and then she came back and it, 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 was, it, it was stupid. So they're just gonna do it all over again and this time they're gonna do all the things that they wanted to do in the original but they couldn't do it the first time around because they just didn't have enough 1080p's on their hands. <laughs> In the original Tomb Raider, you had to look up to all these platforms and jump and navigate up them and, and make your way and think, and it, that was just, that was stupid. Thankfully, in the new Tomb Raider Definitely Edition, everything's better. You see, in this game, you walk along the roller coaster path and you look at things, and sometimes you run along the roller coaster path and you go through things. And who doesn't love a roller coaster? It's just like you're forging your own way through this wild, untamed island or whatever. Except it's just a coincidence that there's only one way to forge through. Some people say this game has too many quick time events. Now I don't know why they're complaining in the first place. Quick time events are great. Everyone loved Rise. <laughs> Now along this fenced off path of a game, you're still going to find plenty of cool puzzles to solve. Fortunately though, they're not going to leave you up and dry. Whenever you come across puzzles, you can just use Tomb Raider's spider sense. Which does that thing in video games where all the things you can interact with get all shiny and gold or orange. So now it's not even a stressful situation anymore, you can just chill and move all the puzzle pieces in the only way possible and then you can progress. This is a great addition because they can Stupid, I don't play a video game to think. Now if there's one thing the original Tomb Raider games could have used that they didn't have, it's an experience-based level up perk system. What kind of 3D platform action game doesn't need an experience-based RPG kind of perk system? If I'm not climbing up a tech tree so that I have like 30% more chance to not trip on my toes and a double chance to do 0.1 extra damage to like a wolf and then skin it and then go back to the fireplace and think about my perks, then I'm not gonna play it. Look, I only play two games. I play Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, Skyrim, and whatever game IGN last gave a 10 out of 10. Look, if a new game isn't like any of those, I'm not even gonna play it. But if it is, then hey, congrats! I'm gonna go buy it at GameStop, and then after I beat it in two days, I'm gonna return it. Hey, there's no better seal of approval than that. I think they did a really good job with Laura in this Tomb Raider because if they had made her extremely attractive and made her tough, then she would just be that stereotypical fighting fuck toy. If they made her really tough but not attractive, then she would have just been a guy with tits. But the fact that they made her incapable of doing anything it makes her the perfect female role model because there isn't a whole lot to strive for. Anyone can accomplish it and no one should ever look down on that. Video games don't need to be fun or entertaining or exciting or have even gameplay outside of QTEs or cover-based shooting. Overall gamers, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition is the best thing to happen to a video game franchise since Metroid Mother M came out on the Nintendo Wii. Thank <laughs> you.